Well, good morning, and thank you so much for tuning in, and we're glad that you're uh, here and a part of this service again today, and uh, looking forward to uh, possibly meeting together soon. Um, I know Pastor Stancil's laid out some things to the staff, and we're praying about, and we understand that we've got to be careful and cautious, but at the same time, I'm ready to see things get back to some type of normalcy. I'm not sure anything will ever be normal again. Uh, we were just talking to Patrick and Mary here about things they are just going to wax worse and worse. And we understand that. That's what the Bible tells us. And we're prepared for that. And uh, so we just look forward to what God has and what God's doing. Always asking and looking uh, to make sure that we're growing, even through difficulty, even through trouble, and even through trial. And so today we uh, look forward optimistically to the future of uh, being able to see you here. We'll still record these and have these live uh, for you as well, um, but looking forward to that. Hope that you're doing well. I do want to start our class off with a prayer time because um, it's been a little bit of while since we spent some time in prayer. And I'll say this, there are a lot of people, um, we're recording this today at a Thursday, last night at church, Pastor uh, was going through the list of people that need our prayer, and the list was very, very extensive, those that were in surgery and out. I know my mom had a procedure this week, I know that uh, Brother Paul Overfield um, is close to um, the end, and so we're praying for him as well. Uh, we're praying for Gary Campbell and Richard Carroll, they're both uh, recovering from surgery, Brother George Comer, um, also in our class, getting ready to uh, have another surgery. Uh, Miss uh, Holtzclaw from our class, also recovering from surgery. Uh, the list was really, really extensive. It goes on and on, and I encourage you to be uh, writing these down and spending time praying for one another. Uh, back when we did our series on James, that's one thing that just uh, really stuck out to me. We can have times where we just lecture, 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 uh, but at some point, we've got to begin to apply what the Bible says. And the Bible says we're to bear one another's burdens. That means that we take that burden that somebody else has, and even though it's not ours, we, we bear that with them, and we make sure and come alongside of them. And Brother Gary Campbell uh, from our class, he mentioned last night, he said, boy, it's a difficult time right now to be in a hospital. It's hard. Nobody's coming in. Nobody's seeing you. You don't know what's going on. And uh, so we encourage you to be praying for one another, reaching out to one another. Um, if you know people from our class, you know people from our church we haven't seen for a while, uh, reach out to them, love on them, uh, care for one another, and bear one another's burdens. So let's start our class off today with a word of prayer. Father, we do thank you for your goodness to us, and Lord, we ask that you'd be with these requests that we've heard last night and then again today. Lord, we think about the overfields. Uh, just a difficult situation, and Father, we're so thankful for your word, thankful for the promise of heaven, and Lord, uh, Paul's testimony, but Father, these are just difficult, difficult days, and Lord, we pray for Vonda, that you give strength there, and Lord, we think about, um, we think about these that are recovering from surgery, these that are getting ready to go into surgery, Lord, think about Brother George, pray that uh, they would be able to get the cancer, Lord, we think about my mom, she had a procedure this week. Lord, we think about my mother-in-law, she's still recovering. Ms. Holesclaw, she's recovering. Brother Harmon, as he's recovering. Uh, Brother Campbell, as he's recovering. Lord, we pray that you be with each of these. Lord, we think about Amber Pranger. Uh, be praying for her. She's got the shingles right now. Lord, we pray for our missionaries as they deal with COVID and they try to minister and reach people. Lord, thank for our church. Thank for our leadership. And Father, help us be careful and cautious. But Father, moving forward, continuing to do what you've asked us to do. Uh, reminded, Lord, that we're here for a purpose and that we have a plan. And Lord, uh, we, pr we, we pray that we will be continuing to do that and work in your will and your word. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the last time that we met, we were in Exodus chapter number 20, and the Lord was laying out uh, the Ten Commandments. And we followed Moses now, and we understand that Moses does not have uh, a typical life. Uh, all of us have a little bit different life, and uh, some of the stories from even our class would shock us sometimes if we could hear what people have been through and what people have gone through. Um, but as we look at this life of Moses, Moses was a man used by God, a man who oftentimes is overlooked uh, when we look at the men and the women of the Bible, but had a very, very difficult job, and we'll look at that some today and some next week. But here we see in Exodus chapter number 20, the laying out of the Ten Commandments. And we've already discussed some of the Ten Commandments. We went through the first five, and we talked about the fact that we should have no other gods before me. 
Um, Jesus said, I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Then we jumped into the fact that we're not to make any idols, uh, no graven images. And we see uh, uh, the next one, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. And it's amazing after I taught on this, uh, if you begin to listen for this, it's amazing how many Christians even um, talk about God, talk about the Lord, and we're not proclaiming Him, we're not praising Him, we're not telling other people about Him. Uh, we're, t- we're using His name, and if we're not careful, we're using it in vain. Then we talked about remembering the Sabbath day to keep it holy. This is a day that we set aside. God is our example in this as He created everything in six literal days, and then He rested on the seventh day. This is the day that we give to the Lord. And uh, we remember it to keep it holy. And then we talked about honoring our father and our mother. As we jump into our uh, next five here today, the next one that we see is thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. We're not to murder. And uh, as we think about that, we say uh, most of the time as we uh, march through the Ten Commandments, this is the one that we can go to and say, I have not done that. I'm doing really good in the not murdering anybody category, and I feel like I'm doing well. And so um, when it comes to the Ten Commandments, man, that's the one that we want to reflect on because we've done really, really well in that. But I want to share a couple of verses uh, that I hope will be a help to you today as we look at this idea of thou shalt not murder. Proverbs chapter number 23 and verse 7 says this, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. The first part of that verse there in Proverbs 23 says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. There's a very, very difficult passage of Scripture that we've studied as a class, and that's the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter number 5, 6, and 7, where we see Jesus begin to talk. And a lot of times when Jesus would speak, he would say, you have heard it said, and he would reference what was given to Moses. He would reference the Ten Commandments. And he would, Jesus would say, you have heard it said, but I say unto you. So as we look at Proverbs chapter number 23, 7, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. All of us understand that when we think in our heart, that's that, that inward man that nobody else knows our thoughts. Aren't you glad that nobody knows your thoughts and that your thoughts can't be displayed on the big screen? Because we got some really, really uh, zingers for thoughts. Some thoughts come into our mind that we're like, where in the world did that come from? And uh, God loves to, or Satan loves to use our mind. That's a, a place where he likes to come because he knows that he can get us if he can get our mind. Because as he thinketh in his heart... So is he. There's another verse in 1 John chapter number 3, verse 15. The Bible says this, Whoso hateth his brother is a murderer. Whoso hateth his brother is a murderer. So as we look back at the Ten Commandments and we say, Boy, if there's one I can check off the list... It's, uh, it's that one, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not murder. We're not supposed to take somebody else's life. And as we look at this, the Bible says, Whoso hateth his brother, this is in 1 John chapter number 3, verse 15, is a murderer. So now we have to go back and maybe uncheck that box. Because as we think about um, our life, and uh, most of the Ten Commandments have to do with two things. Either our relationship with God or our relationship with others. Our relationship with God, our relationship with others. Later, Jesus says, every law and everything that I've already given you can be hung on these two commandments. Love the Lord thy God and love thy neighbor as thyself. We're to love God and love people. As we look at this, whoso hateth his brother is a murderer. Now I do want you to look at Matthew chapter number Chapter number 6, I believe, uh, verses number 21, the Bible says this, Ye have heard that it is said of old, Thou shalt not murder, and whosoever murders in danger of the judgment. But I say to you, whosoever is angry with his brother without cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And so the same penalty is there. Jesus is now again referring to the fact that hating someone is just like murdering them. And so when the Bible says, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not murder, um, boy, we think that we're doing really, really good there. But Jesus says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. 
How's your relationship with other people? Is there somebody that you really, really dislike? Is there somebody that you could categorize that you hate that person? That's such a strong word that the Bible says that, um, that that hatred that you have in your heart is the same as murder. The next one we see there is not only thou shalt not kill, but thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So we look again at Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, the Sermon on the Mount. It says this, Ye have heard that it is said of old, You shall not commit adultery, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust at her, hath already committed adultery with her in his heart. And so we see another parallel here where Jesus says, uh, Boy, you might think you're doing good in this category, but I say unto you, if you're thinking it in your heart, it's like you've done it. If you hate your brother, it's like you've murdered him. If you're lusting after a woman, it's like you've committed adultery with him because you would do it if you could. The intent of our heart, the intent of our heart is what we, could, what we would do if we could get away with it. You understand that God knows what you would do if you could do it and get away with it. That's what he's addressing here. He's not addressing our outward action. He's not addressing what we've actually done because there's people that will live their whole life and not take someone else's life, but they'll hate someone. They'll despise someone. There's someone that they're just out and after to get. There's, there's people that will live their whole life and not commit adultery, but at the same time, they, they lust and uh, they have thoughts that they shouldn't have. God is addressing that inward man. What you would do if you could do it and get away with it. That's what he's talking about here as he begins to then say, uh, you have heard it said because these guys thought they were doing pretty good. The crowd that he was talking to thought they were checking every box, that they were uh, keeping those Ten Commandments perfectly. But God knew their heart. He knew their thoughts. He knew that there were people in the crowd that he was talking to that hated other people. He knew that there were people in the crowd he was talking to that had lust for other people. And he begins to smote them a little bit and say, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. It's like you've already done it. And he goes on to say, Thou shalt not steal. This is when we take something that doesn't belong to us. This is something that um, even our, our, our little children, boy, we've got to watch them. Our little children will be playing together and they'll be playing with a toy and nobody has to teach them to, uh, to come in and take that toy from somebody else. And if you've ever spent any time in the nursery, if you've ever spent any time with children or grandchildren, boy, you see something that comes over and uh, boy, they'll see something that they want and they come over and uh, they'll just take it. They'll take it. Man, I remember growing up, we had an incident in our school where uh, something had been taken. And nobody would confess to it. And nobody would bring it up. And our principal, man, he put everything on pause. He said, we're going to find out who took this. Somebody broke one of the Ten Commandments. And so taking something that does not belong to us. Um, I love this, and I talked about this last time, um, when somebody would say that they're a good person. There's a man named Ray Comfort, and he would go out and witness to people and say, would you, think, would you say that you're a good person? And all those people that Jesus has been talking to felt like they were good. They felt like they were good people who were obeying the law to the T. And as Ray Comfort begins to talk to these people, and he, he's got a microphone there in front of their face, and he says, would you consider yourself a good person? They say, yes. And they said, have you ever stolen anything? Yes. He said, what's that make you? He said, well, it makes me a thief. Have you ever lied before? Yes. Well, that makes you a liar. Have you ever, and he goes through the list, and before he's done, man, they're a lying, stealing, idol worshiping, uh, and all of a sudden you start to realize maybe... I haven't checked the box. Maybe I'm not as good of a person as I think that I am. The Bible still tells us that our righteousness, even the good that we do, is as filthy rags. So as Jesus is talking to these Pharisees and he's telling these people that, oh, you may not have taken a rock like Abel did. You understand that murder has been an issue since the first four people on the planet. The first four people, one of them took another person's life. 
You may not have done what Abel did or what Cain did. Um, you might have not have killed somebody else, but you're, you're thinking in your heart, you'd do it if you could get away with it. You might not have committed adultery. You might not have taken something, but you want something. You, you want to take it. You've thought about it. You've, you've thought about how you could. Jesus begins to deal with something much, much greater than our actions. He begins to deal with our heart. And what we would do if we could do it and get away with it. Thou shalt not steal. Number nine, thou shalt not bear false witness against your neighbor. This is just about telling a lie. This is about telling a story. This is about uh, exaggerating as you speak. Uh, boy, if we're not careful, we can get a real bad reputation really quick about um, how we tell things and how we explain things and we make a bigger deal out of something than it actually was. That's a lie. Well, we've got to be careful that we're not bearing false witness and that uh, our yea is our yea and our nay is our nay and uh, that when we speak, we're speaking the truth the best way that we know how. Well, when we come back from fishing and we begin to tell that story about how big the fish was, um, that can carry out into every area of our life. And all of a sudden, it's not a big deal to stretch the truth. And all of a sudden, it's not a big deal to um, exaggerate a little bit or, or say it a little bit different than how it actually happened. We've got to get to the point where we take ourselves out of it. We're not trying to make ourselves look better. We're not trying to um, do anything to exalt self. We are just simply telling things as it happened, the way that it happened, and being a, 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 a bearer of truth not bearing false witness against your neighbor. Have you ever had somebody lie about you, say something that wasn't true? Somebody will say something that um, isn't true about you, and boy, there's something in us that rises up that we want to, we want to clear that. We want to, uh, to make that right. The Bible says that that's what we need to do, again, make sure that we're not doing against our neighbor, bearing false witness. Number 10, ye shall not covet. Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not cover anything uh, that thy neighbor has. Thou shalt not covet. Uh, we were sitting here talking last night. We're talking about that new car, that Tesla car. And uh, that Tesla car basically drives itself. And um, it's just an amazing machine. It'll go about 400 miles um, on one charge. Um, it goes super, super fast. We're just talking about the fact that this is just an amazing piece of machinery. And that's okay to talk about, but when we start to desire that, when we start to covet that, when we start to wish that we had that. I had a friend who had a Mercedes, and uh, he came and picked me up one day and uh, took me for a ride in it. And we were driving in this car, and uh, we turned the corner, and I noticed something. Man, when he turned the corner, uh, typically when somebody turns the corner, you just kind of slide a little bit uh, to that side. But that car has some type of a function to where it, it kind of reached up and just held you in place. There was a, there was a, there was a mechanism there that, uh, when that when that car turned, it just stabilized you to where you didn't have to move at all. And it just kind of hugged you a little bit and kept you in your place. And I remember thinking, that's just so cool. There was air-conditioned seats. The air-conditioned seats were hitting my back. And so in this Florida heat, you know, the moment you get in your car, man, that back gets hot really fast. And this air was blowing on my back. And this arm was kind of keeping me there in my seat. And I remember leaning my head back and hitting the, the headrest back there. And it felt like I was on a sleep number bed. I mean, it was just so comfortable and so nice. And uh, I was happy, I was genuinely happy for my friend to be able to get that car. But I've got to be super careful that I'm okay driving my 2004 F-150. The Bible still says that we are to be content and with whatever state we're in, with what God has given us. One of my favorite memories with Brother John Holtzclaw, and Brother John now is... Uh, it doesn't remember everything like he used to, and, uh, but I remember this. And we were still at the small building down here on 78th uh, Avenue, and um, he was up front praying, and uh, I was up front praying, and he just came over and started to pray with me. And he began to thank God for his car, for the house, for the food that he had eaten, for the clothes that he had on. He began to thank God for things that I had taken for granted that I had just kind of overlooked as just kind of like, that's always been there. We live in America. 
And he began to thank God for the things that God had given him. We've got to be careful as we look at our life and we examine our life that we're not coveting something that somebody else has. When we look at social media, that we're not wanting that for ourselves. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's a home. Maybe it's a lifestyle. Maybe it's a job. Well, we've got to learn to be content with where we are, with what God's given us, and we've got to learn to be content in whatever state that we're in. If we're not careful, we'll be going through our life and we'll begin to covet everything and everybody else. And God says, hey, I had this for you and you were never content. A lot of times God just wants us to get to that state of contentment. Wherever you have me, whatever you want me to do, that's exactly where I'm going to be. That's exactly what I'm going to do. And it's then that God can begin to work. It's then that God can begin to show you what He actually has, and He begins to show you more of the plan. Man, as we look at these Ten Commandments that are laid out in Exodus chapter number 20, we find out very, really quick that God is very concerned about our relationship with one another. God is concerned about our relationship with one another. How we treat one another is so important. And He's concerned about His relationship that we have with Him. Well, we have, we have a responsibility to make sure and to be checking our life and checking uh, and making sure that we do not have any other gods that are before Him. Making sure that He has the number one spot in the priority list of our life. Making sure that we've not made any graven image. There's nothing that we've made with our hands that we're worshiping, but it may be something that we've bought. It might be something that we've uh, brought in. If you've ever seen a neighbor who gets a new car or a new boat or uh, new jet skis, and man, they're out washing that and they're out waxing that. But we've got to be careful that things do not become the idols in our life. And be careful that we're not taking the Lord's name in vain. When you speak God's name, you ought to be praising Him or telling somebody else about Him. Praising Him or telling somebody else about Him. we got to be careful when we go around and we just say, Thank you, Jesus. Because uh, is that something that we're really, we're really proclaiming? Is that something that we're really thinking at that moment? Um, Hollywood has made it very, very desensitized that we, we use Jesus' name and we use God's name and we use all of these things and we're not proclaiming our love to Him. We're not praising Him or telling somebody else about Him. But we've got to be careful when we're talking about using that OMG or thank you Jesus or thank you God. Uh, we better mean what we say when it comes to God's name. Remembering that Sabbath to keep it holy. Boy, I'm thankful for a family. Growing up, we knew what we were doing. We knew that seventh day that we were going to be spending it worshiping the Lord. There was no extra activities. There was nothing else that we were doing that day. And everything was put on hold as we worshiped the Lord and kept that day holy. Honor your father and mother. Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against your neighbor. Thou shalt not covet. God has given us ten commandments. And then later he said, all of these can boil on these two. As you look at each one of these commandments, you can say, boy, that one falls under loving God. Or that one falls under loving people. Our responsibility as Christians is to love God and to love people. The way that we love God, we make sure there's no other gods before him. We make sure that we're not making any idols in our life that we're worshiping with our time and our energy and our resource. And we make sure that we do not use His name in vain. We make sure that we use that day, that Sabbath day, to worship Him and to keep it holy. Then when we look at our relationships, we honor, first and foremost, our father and our mother. We don't murder. We don't commit adultery. We don't steal. We don't lie. And we do not covet Love God, love people. Father, we're so thankful for your word. Lord, we're thankful for the fact that you've just laid it out for us. We don't have to wonder what we're supposed to be doing. Father, you've given us a list. Lord, I love lists because lists you can go through. And Father, you can just say, how am I doing when it comes to this? You don't keep us guessing, but Father, you lay it out for us. Father, help us this week. Help us in our life 
to make sure that we're loving you and loving others. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. The evening service will begin at 6 o'clock. That's all going to be live. I hope that you're tuning in. I hope that you're keeping up. Uh, looking forward to getting back to some type of normalcy. God bless you. Have a great week.